Did you guys have any moments in the Mint 400? You're like, oh shit, did we just hit that? Yes. I yeah. Have <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> there was this one section. It's these. It's the King Proving Ground. Okay. There. It's all the King flags, and uh-huh. it's where they test out there. And I was full on it, like 80, 90 miles an hour through the biggest whoops you could imagine. It was just doing so good. And I saw coming up one of the whoops, pretty like bigger than the rest. I was like, okay. <laughs> and and Vivian, you could just gas it, and it would just jump off the whoop and stay good. And his truck, it just. Boom, and it popped, oh, and I was no. like, all I saw was the dirt, like, oh my God. And it, I just gassed it, and it just kept going. Oh. Hey guys, uh, Aaron here with LSK Suspension. Uh, today we have a, a SoCal Suspension here with us, um, and uh, his son, Zach. Zach. And uh, this is Eric. Yep. And uh, you guys might know this. Um, these guys uh, by Vivian are the the really bitchin F one hundred build. Yep. Um, and then also recently, you guys just purchased a uh, a Camberg truck. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a um, a Ranger that's built and yep. just racing the M four hundred. Yeah. Um, so these guys have been around for a long time, and uh, we're pretty excited to you know see what they have to offer for the industry and and uh, learn more about you. So yeah. so you know what exactly. Um, do you guys do? I mean, let us know. What, what's all the stuff that you guys do on your day-to-day basis? Well, I own SoCal Suspension in El Cajon, California. And um, we do suspension from lift kits, uh, installs, to long travel suspension installs. A lot of lowering, you know, like lowering cars, coilovers. Um, air suspension is one of my, my things that I got really, like my niche market that I got really good at over about like 15 years ago. I started doing hot rod, you know, airbagging to like classic cars uh-huh. and things like that. And then um, suspension repair um, to wheel alignments. We do a ton of wheel alignments every day. And then um, wheels and tires and all the aftermarket goodies that would kind of go along with suspension. Like if you need a lift kit, you need wheels and tires. If you need a long travel kit, you need 37 inch tires, stuff like that. Yeah. And then um, airbagging a car, they we have to get this like a custom billet wheel that fits the truck so it can lay all the way on the ground. Right. That's, like, like that's my like thing. Like I got, I learned how to make a, a classic car lay right on the rocker when it's all the way aired down. Awesome. And how yeah. much body dropping I had to do and four linking it and, you know, doing all this stuff that I learned that over the last, you know, 15 years of how to do some crazy stuff like that. And so. ha- how much of that do you still do compared to like the off-road suspension? Or? I still do a lot of airbagging and, and hot rod suspension and lowering and coilovers. And it's still at least 50% of what I do. Really? Yeah. Off-roading awesome. it's only... Because I was that guy. I was not an off-road guy. Okay. Uh, so if you kind of know me, like the last, what, five or six years? Yeah. I just really got heavily into off-roading in my personal hobby, mm-hmm. you know, not as uh, business-wise, you know? And um, so it kind of took over your business, too, because if you get into something, of course, your business kind of evolves into that, too. And so it, it, it went from, like, maybe 70 to 80% of what we did was, was car-related and lowering trucks and air suspension and lift kits but not long travel or real crazy off-road builds we didn't do any of that and then when i got into it and built my own first uh, bronco was the uh-huh. first one i built at the shop then we just got really heavily into it so now it's about a 50 50 but still everybody knows me from the back in the day the guy yeah. that lowered my tahoe or my truck or uh put airbags on my uh 66 uh, you know cadillac or something like that so so, so, so as far as like on the off-road side um, do you have a lot of it is like lift kit stuff or is it a lot of desert high performance, uh, you know, vehicles or like how much of how much of that do you do in the off road? So it's, it's yeah, I think the majority of it is mid travel, like say upper arms, like okay. your, your upper arms that coil over um, some Devers in the back, something I'm so my shop used to be about. 50% fabricating mm-hmm. and 50% bolt-on stuff, right? So like a bolt-on kit versus a fabricating kit, we were about 50-50. And then five years ago, I, th- I it just wasn't paying the bills. I mean, I wasn't making a lot of money. I had to pay so many fabricators. I had you know three full-time fabricators at the shop. I had um, all the guys doing the bolt-on stuff and just big overhead. And, and the jobs that we fabricated took a long time to build. You know how that is. It takes... You're thinking it's going to just be like a month and it's there for three months yeah, until you're yeah, finished, right? Right. <laughs> and it's a big, you know, you make good money on it, but it's not really after you pencil it all out, you're not making 
enough to just survive. Just so much yeah. labor. You're doing yeah. like aerospace quality labor and getting paid a quarter exactly. of it, right? And in those yeah. jobs, you quote the job and you might spend twice as much time doing it that you actually thought you were, you know? So um, it, sent, I, it just didn't, wasn't, I wasn't doing very good financially and the, and the business was doing good enough to survive, but I wasn't making a lot of extra money for my family and surviving and all that. So I knew the bolt-on stuff was just in and out. You know, you're, yeah. you, the car comes in, you bolt on a lift kit, and then it's done at the end of the day. Right. You know? And you got paid. And, you know, cash flow is key in a business. So I really pushed the bolt-on stuff, and now my business is 90% bolt-on and awesome. 10% fabrication. Yeah. And believe it or not, the business now tripled in profit margin, and it's just doing so much That's better. Incredible. And, and it yeah. allows us to do what we do now and mm-hmm. go out and have fun and have a nice... Buy, buy a nice car and build Vivian and do the fun things as hobbies, but we still fabricate. I, I'm a fabricator. Um, I have a, a, a fabricator slash installer that's always there, but we don't, we try to stay away from it. Right. You know, now. Something you can bring in that morning, bolt yeah, it on, bolt get on. it out in a day or two, yeah. right? That's the key. I have one section of the shop that's the fabricating side, and uh-huh. there's always a car being worked on, and we call it our filler job. So we get, get all the bolt-on jobs done, and then there's, say, four hours, three hours left in the day, we go work on the fabricating job, right. and then we go back, you know? So, that's awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, it's it's uh, it's it, as far as, like, the people that you see, that you get a lot of people from your area mm-hmm. that are coming to you local, or do you have people driving from all around? Um, it's still, like, it's about 80% local, and then... With the the air suspension and some of the really niche lower lower stuff I do, I get them all over California. Okay. Yeah, they come. Very cool. A lot so of LA guys. How, how did how did you get into this? So um, so I was a a young kid when I was like eight or nine years old. I started skateboarding. It was I fell in love with it. It was all I wanted to do. I, I mean, the second I picked up a skateboard, I I would say I skated every day of my life from like eight years old till twenty four. Like and um, when I was 18, I got really good at it. And I was good at the whole time, but I got super good where I was I was good at street skating mm-hmm. back then. And so I got sponsored, you know, factory sponsored and all that. And my team manager said, hey, you can be pro someday. And I was like, really? I don't, you know, and so I, I worked hard. I became pro. I turned pro when I was 18 in high school and then started traveling all over the United States and the world, Japan, Australia, all that stuff. Wow. And they had skateboards with my name on it and I made royalties and I didn't have to work, and but I was really into cars. Like I, when I turned 16, my dad's a car guy. He's, he's into hot rods and took me to car shows. So I, I, he taught me how to work on cars. So when I got my first car, I had to, I lowered it and yeah. did all the wheels and tires myself. You know, I just loved it. And um, so I was known in the skateboard industry as a car guy. Like mm-hmm. the car, I always had nice cars because I made pretty good money and still lived at home. So I had extra money to have a nice car or a nice mm-hmm. truck and fix it up. And I, you know, airbag it or do whatever I did, but I always wanted to do it myself, you know. And then um, skateboarding died in the '90s, the mid '90s, before ESPN X Games and all okay. that. Okay. And um, I was barely making enough money to survive. I mean, at first when I turned pro, I was doing good, and then it was just the like, industry was dying, and so I needed to get a job. I had a um, a couple kids at the time, and I had two daughters, and I was like, I need to get a job. So the local shop that I would go to and buy my parts. I was in there hanging out and I told the owner, hey, I, I'm, I need to get a job soon. He's like, what, you have, you're a professional skateboarder? I go, I don't make enough money to even survive doing it now. And he goes, well, I'll hire you. And I go, really? I mean, I'd love, because he knew I was a good yeah. good mechanic, you know, and he could do a lot, all I did all my own cars. So he hired me right there on the spot and pushed me right in the back of the shop and I started working on cars. Right. And yeah. that's when I started doing it. And I worked for shops and after shop after shop, and then my I, one of the guys I worked at, I was like basically running one of his locations. He had three different shops in San Diego, and the location he had up north wasn't doing good financially, so he was just going to shut it down. Oh. And um, I knew the guy that was running it. I knew he wasn't a very good manager, and he wasn't doing a good job, so I felt like if I ran it, I could make you some money. So I said, let me manage it, and uh-huh. I, I can do what good for you. He goes, no, I'm just going to close it down. I go, well, then sell it to me. And he goes, really? I go, yeah. So I bought that location, change it to my name. My parents loaned me like 10 grand and we bought it for just the price of the, the stuff that was in that's, the shop. That's know? awesome. Yeah. And uh, we did it and I changed the name and that's when I started my first attempt at a, biz- at a business by myself. Made a bunch of mistakes and I was a jack of all trades. Like, you know, I would turbo a, a car or lower a car or engine transplant I mean just whatever would come in I'd try to do yeah. and you, when you you know how it is if you try to do everything you're not 
really excellent at one thing. You're just you're good at everything, but that gets you in trouble when you take in jobs you really don't know what you're doing. And I think that was my big mistake, and that's why we failed as a company after four years. And um, so I got all bummed out, and I was like, what do, I, what do I do next? And I talked to my dad, and he said, if you're going to do another business, pick a business that you're good at. Mm-hmm. You know, Carve your niche out in life and just you know, stick to what you are you can become very good at and professional at. And that way you give a professional job to each customer and they're happy. And so he's like, what are you, what are you into? And I said, I'm into suspensions, my favorite part of, we kind of looked at every everything and we're like, suspension's the one. And so I picked suspension, but I didn't think I could make enough money at suspension. Like, how am I just gonna do suspension? Because you have to do other things too, right, right, to survive. But it worked out. And so how I started was, I started the business as mobile. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. so I um, started, I called it Mobile Motorsports. Wow. And I... Um, so you're like going to people's yeah. houses and installing stuff in their driveway? I or? had an F-150, I put an air compressor in the back, oh, all my tools, and I awesome. would... And um, at the time, I, work, I was working at Dave Turner Motorsports where we did like road racing stuff, Porsches, roll cages, and stuff like that. And he's like, I'll, 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 give you, I'll send you jobs. Uh-huh. So I would drive over to the guy's house and put a roll cage in his Porsche or put... Recaro seats in his Miata, and I just drive out and do all this stuff. And then I got really, you know, I was doing suspension a lot, so I would go to a local manu, not, not, local distributor, pick up some Eibach springs, uh-huh. take them to the guy's house, and lower his car in his driveway. Wow! You know? And I, I did it one man, just myself, no employees, and I would go to like three people's houses a day, five days a week, wow. and the business did, did so good. I did, I was killing it I, for seven years. I was mobile. I didn't want to have a shop. I just wanted to just go to people's houses because there was no overhead. Right. All I had was gas and insurance and that was it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I did that for seven years and then then that's when I got into the off-roading side. Uh-huh. I was like, I, I want to start doing lift kits and long travel kits and bigger trucks and I can't do that mobily. I mean, you need a lift to lift right. up these big trucks. I can't do that. So I, my parts supplier where I got all the parts had a little roll-up door, like one roll-up door bay, and he's all, I'll rent it to you for cheap. Uh-huh. So I rented that, and I thought I was gonna do mobile and the, the off-roading in the, in the shop. And um, long story short, immediately I got the shop going, and I didn't want to do mobile anymore, and this guy was getting, he just got born. He was like one years old, and that's when I thought, I wanna have a shop when he grows up, yeah. and something that he can come in and help us someday. And so that the shop was kind of dedicated to him. Like he's born now, let's, let's get the shop going and, and make it more of a family oriented yeah, thing. So right. I, I had that one shop that did good. And then I rented a, like a four bay shop. And then that I grew out of that real fast. And I had two shops like in the same complex, I'd walk, run back and forth. And then the big, huge shop that was in that complex I wanted, he finally, moved and I gra- I got that and it's like a 7,000 square foot shop Yeah. and then right next to it connected to it there's a huge showroom that was a motorcycle UTV shop and where they had like a big showroom and I didn't have a showroom I had a small little you know waiting room for the customers and um, he finally a year later went out of business so I took both of those so that's what I have now today for the awesome. last 11 years very cool in that building very cool and and so I, that was wow <laughs> yeah it's a hell of a journey. Yeah, it was a big yeah. journey. I, yeah. I started with nothing, and I'm where I'm at today, just grinding it out. You know, I didn't have no one give me anything. I just started with nothing and just slowly built to Yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, as far as, like, you know, everyone knows about your, your current builds and the, and the stuff that you guys um, drive. You guys yeah. just did the MIM 400. Can you tell us more about, you know, Vivian and the F100 that is so all over the place on social media? Well, everybody probably knows it started as a Tundra, right? Mm. So... Yeah, <laughs> so it was the it was the gray tundra, and then it was orange and different colors. Uh-huh. And it was a tundra to Jubera Fab built. Um, kind of came about where Jubera was building it for a guy, and it was almost finished. And he kind of you know out it wasn't into it. So I ended up trading a uh, a Can Am for it. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I that was such a good trade. Now, yeah, good trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A Can Am for this. So what yeah. what condition was it when you got it? Was it, it was, was it already built? It was, it was almost done. It was like eighty five percent finished. Um, it still it, it it needed engine wiring, a couple things. It was that, already linked and had, it was already linked. Everything was raw. There was nothing powder coated, nothing painted. Yeah. No seats in it. Stuff like that. Um, That's so a hell of a Tundra. Yeah, it was a good truck. It was. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we got it and um, brought it to the shop and spent, I think I spent three months um, f- 
finishing it, then blowing it apart, of course, and then powder coating and painting everything and stealing, mm -hmm. and taking the motor back out. You know how you have to finish it and then retake it back apart. Put it all. It was cool because I learned how all this worked. That was like a great first, you know, attempt. So we did it all, put it all back together, and then started. You know, starting that journey and what you see today. So. Wow! And, and who did all the work switching into an F one hundred? Morgan Clark. So, um, I, I've always. It wasn't the truck. Never. Lo I never looked at a Tundra and thought, "Oh, I want a Tundra." Right. It was cool looking, but I, I'm an old school classic kind of guy. I've always liked older classic rat rods and, and trucks. It and, definitely catches your eye. Yeah. It's different. And I, yeah, I just like the old vintage stuff. It's just my personality. It's who I am and what I love to look at. You know, I go to car shows and go to see old cars. That's kind of what I'm into. So um, I always wanted this cab. So I bought this cab from a guy out in Alpine and just had it sitting at the shop for a while. Uh -huh. you know? And I was going to build the truck, but then I thought it'd be cool to cab swap it. And I told Morgan, you know, eventually I want to cab swap it. He said, well, I'd let me give it a chance to do it. And I said, sure. And then it it snowballed, so. <laughs> yeah, like everything, right? <laughs> yeah. I was just going to be, I knew we'd have to recage it and because it was wider. It was the same length as the Tundra cab, but uh -huh. it was, what was it, like almost 10 inches wider than the Tundra. So it was quite a bit Damn. wider. So I knew we'd have to recage it mm -hmm. and a few other things, but I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But long story short, I mean, if you everybody's watched the, the videos that Morgan's showed how it built, but it's. The only thing that's left from the Tundra is the Jubera bulkhead front suspension and the motor, and everything else is got a changed. Tube yeah. chassis, yeah. All, he yeah. did such a killer job on that. Oh my god, yeah. Like uh, so, Morgan Clark did all the cab swap and all that. And all everything that. It just yeah. looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and he did it amazingly fast in like eight or nine months. Wow, which is incredible amount of work he did. Um, Especially for a full custom truck like that, yeah. I mean that's unreal. And uh, Colin, his 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 head guy there, he's a F one hundred nut. He loves F one hundreds. He has one himself. Uh -huh. So uh, Morgan just let him go wild. You know, like hey, this is your baby. I'm gonna help you do it. And they both just took a wow. took a love to it and. That's why it turned out so well. I so, so you loved it so much that you bought him yeah. a Ranger. Ranger, yeah. Ranger, and yeah. this is a Camberg built Ranger. No, that we, bu was we bought the first Ranger. So tell for tell oh the oh, first okay. Ranger. It was white. Um, it was a little older. I like older trucks, like my dad. I don't it was know. Nineteen eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. yeah. It was nice. Square, like a square. So it was, it was it like a, a rain gutter. Rain gutter. Rain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah rain okay. Gutter. Okay. Yeah. It was definitely a home built. Yeah. Ranger. It was nice. It was. Really good for what it was. Yeah. Center mount. Yeah, center mount. Yeah, it had a, what, what's the motor in it? Uh, one UZ. One UZ, which is like a Lexus LS400. Yeah. Motor. Oh, shit. Yeah, and it was supercharged. Yeah. Super oh, damn. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and was this just something you were just cruising around the streets or taking it just dirt only or? Um, We took it to events. It was like a, it was a fun car. And then we took it to King of Hammers, uh -huh. which was the first race, was Super fun. Yeah. And last year or this or this, uh, this year? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so when, it, when it you did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Did the Ranger? Yeah. Do you yeah. guys still have it? No. No. Okay. We changed it, it up for, yeah, the new for one. this yeah. Yeah, yeah, race yeah. truck. So, yeah, that's what we did, and it just kind of switched into we want to do this racing thing now. Mm -hmm. So, how did you come across this new the new Ranger? So, we we did the King of the Hammers as like. A test. A, a test, yeah, like yeah. a father and son test. Let's just go out and do it. It'll be great. If, if we love it, we love it. If yeah. not, you know, we'll just do it one time. And yeah. King of the Hammers is kind of perfect for that, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you did King of the yeah, Hammers. It was yeah, hell 40 yeah. miles, <laughs> yeah. perfect. And for, we thought 40 miles for our first race ain't too big a deal. Um, we did pre-run 140 miles. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we did the, pre, the, the race, and we were driving home, um, and I just turned to Zach and said, "Hey, so what do you think? Do you want to get into this, or you just want to just do off, you know, just do off roading, or do you want to start heavily racing?" And he's like, "Dad, I love it. You know, I yeah. want I want to race. Yeah. And I, I mean, I want. He still, you, he, he loves. Yeah, I like having fun. Play. Yeah, is still what we what we want to do. All so did, you, do, did yeah. you come across like was this, was this online that you found this uh, thing? So um, Eric, a buddy of ours, he used to co-drive with the Camber kids uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. He's really good friends with Jerry and Jason at Camber. And he had mentioned even before this, like two months or a month before we were in Glamis together, we go out camping mm -hmm. with him. And he's like, hey, I, Jerry is going to sell the Camber kids Ranger soon because they're getting a little older. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going, I think they're in college now. They're kind of like 
over the Ranger. They might build a different, like a trophy truck, like a 6100 truck, and it will be for sale pretty soon. And you just told me that, and we weren't in the market at that time. Mm -hmm. And then when we were driving home from King of the Hammers, I go, I have a line on on another truck. We can talk to Jerry and see if he'll sell it. So I texted Eric, hey, see if it's for sale. He's, all right, I'll find out. And that next day, he texted me back. He's like, it's for sale if you want it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and so me and him, I called Jerry, talked to him for like an hour on the phone, and then I said, I'll come up on Wednesday. We... Me and him jumped in the truck and went up there in the middle yeah. of the week. And um, he, Jason, and him are both. They, f I think they really had a soft spot for, you know, Zach being the driving it. Uh -huh. They really wanted to pass on the torch to to a kid, not like just someone that's going to go out and beat it up or not. Yeah, yeah, it, you know? yeah. And um, we didn't have enough money at the time because we hadn't sold the Ranger yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were like, God, how can we? He wanted a lot of money for it, and the roof was, you know pretty beat up and I go, and he was going to fix all that stuff before we bought it and I go just let me just buy it as, as right, it is right. and yeah. this is all we can afford and he first said no I, I can't sell it that cheap and I said well I can't come up with any more money and it was true I couldn't and at the time and then um, Jason was like just sell it to him they, look at yeah, it he's yeah, 14 yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> so, so he goes alright so they, they sold it to us and then we got a good deal we yeah. just took it home and now well, we just we sold the Ranger like two yeah. weeks later, which helped us. And awesome. I sold my Can Am that I had, and um, that money kind of just recouped what yeah. we needed to get to get this Ranger going. And so, so now you raced it. You just yeah, did the mid four hundred. Yeah. Was that the first race you've done with it? Yes, yes. it was. And, uh, it did so well. It's, it's awesome. It, it drives like a trophy truck. What it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, man. That's that's rad. Fast. Now you're giving me addicted to it to yeah. life. Because once you do it, you are. You're in into racing forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're we're super excited about you know you guys partnering with us and yep. and uh, you know not only just on truck stuff but also UTV stuff which you guys haven't really right. dabbled on until now. Right. Well, with with yeah. my business, um, every like year I try to find another niche, right? Yeah, yeah. Something else you could add to the to the business, and I've been thinking for the last three or four years I should start doing UTVs because. Uh -huh. Every time I work on one for a customer, it's the same thing. Right. It's just yeah. it's just a little bit different, right? Yeah, it's just different body. <laughs> yeah. So um, I thought maybe we could, I could do with suspension, wheels and tires, yep. the doors, all the stuff you guys offer. So I think this that's our new thing we want to start doing more of. And I don't have to do a ton of it, just here or there and dabble in it. and Yeah, see yeah. where it goes. See where it goes. And yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to, you know cages, yeah. X travel, suspension right. stuff, like whatever comes down your guys' pipeline. We still want to really we, cool. we do want to do a lot of the stuff you guys do like the you know long travel kits mid travel kits i think yep. I, that's another thing i don't do a lot of you know the bolt-on long travel kits mm -hmm. i, I want to do more of that because most of my customers like just the mid travel kit you know yeah. the upper arms and coilovers and maybe some divers they just don't go too extreme i was looking at that raptor you guys are doing that's yeah, that's the yeah, type of that. stuff i'd like to do because yeah. it's bolt -on. honestly all of our newer like a lot of the older generation trucks just stuff that's like legacy products that we've had for i mean almost 10 years of our products yeah um we did a lot of like shock tower replacement stuff but on the newer trucks like our our 19 up silver auto that we're coming up with we have a bronco and a bronco raptor kit coming out um and then we also have the raptor stuff f-150 yeah. we've kind of like absorb this thing like what you're talking about earlier where we want to make something where you can just bolt it on yeah um and we realize how much easier it is even though it might be more badass to do the shock tower and the, oh, the yeah. bolt. i mean it's just it's on another level and we'll eventually offer that stuff but we want to cater towards stuff that you know you guys do really well on and mm -hmm. be able to put them on people's vehicles and be successful with it so that's yeah we're really focusing on that really really Heavily, hard especially yeah. like that raptor it's like a bolt-in bed cage i yeah. mean there's some welding but that's something that we're hoping to be able to send you a welded bed cage that you can install in people's vehicles. Yeah, it's It'd be a way a, to go. an awesome in and out project for And the you Raptor guys. customers are so awesome. They're rad guys and they they have a little extra money to spend and they just um, they get it. You know, they they want to go out and have fun, but they want to make a nice fun but streetable truck that they can have a good time with you know? yeah as far as like uh you know lifestyle and things like that and working with terror crew i know you guys are really involved mm -hmm. um, especially like social media is big for you guys like yeah. how does that all you know correlate to your day-to-day -day? Uh, i think we both like social media kind of became a platform for me for the business mm -hmm. you know like trying to promote and get more people to see what we do and yeah. what you guys do you know we, we promote like as a business owner you're like okay i want to show my lifestyle, but I also want to show like my, you know, suspension and the cars and the trucks and everything. Like, cause I was in the car show scene before the off-roading scene. So we would go to car shows and we would go, um, show our builds, you know, 
like you'd start the build and you'd you'd kind of just document it on social media and I found that you'd get a following and you didn't think a lot of people were watching but they were they were watching each step of that build that you did and then when it was finished and it, You'd, you'd, you'd post it and everyone would talk and give mm -hmm. you comments and it hype you up and it made you feel good that there was you know three or four people or 10 people watching you build this car that I'd built back then. So I got addicted to that part of it and and I would learn from other people on social media. Yeah. You know, they'd DM you and, hey, you should do it this way and this is how I learned or I would message, hey, what do you guys think I should do here you know on this build? Right. So um, just getting that intertwining with people on social media became like a another facet of my life almost yeah you know? and um so i do that a lot and so in the off-roading scene when i got a part of it i uh, like right away i was drawn towards the terror crew crew guys like um they they're a lifestyle like it's all about we're going to go out and have a great time today but we're also going to document that day mm -hmm. and we're going to film it it's going to go on youtube it's going to go on our instagram they're going to make reels all that stuff of what we did so that's fun it's like Let's go have fun, but also let's document it and show what we did that day and show the, the, the actual yeah. people, like everyone that's into it. So um, it became like, that's kind of the difference between racing and, and that. It's like we would go out and just yeah. like all meet up. Like, hey, we're all going to Ocotillo t right. um, on this Ocotillo trip. And Tara's really good. Oh, let's do the Ocotillo this. They'd make a name and we'd just all go and show up and just hit these huge jumps yeah. and, and push ourselves to go harder and it does backfire a little bit on you because you know you do go too crazy and roll your truck or uh -huh. jump too far because you're trying to outdo you don't want to be on that social media thing and so you gotta you gotta calm down a little bit you know yeah. i remember uh meeting you guys out at uh superstition yeah um during i think it was new year's new year's yeah yeah and then uh cruising and it was cool because we went from like camp to camp and as we were driving along there was just like people like by the time we got to the end of where we were driving there was the just crowds. like a mound of crowds falling. Yeah. It was yeah. like we just did this drive that just turned into this like collection of people. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. And, and that's how it, was it incredible. is. incredible. Yeah, that's how the terror crew thing is or or that group of things. Even when I go out with Blake and we go out and film, we'll go to Glamis and Blake will call me and, okay, let's go hit um, swing set. Yeah. And we'll all meet at swing set and it's just a it's huge, a huge crowd. Yeah. Everyone and and me and him are sending these our our trucks over these huge jump and everyone's filming and and then you you get back to camp and everybody had their cell phone out and it's all over social yeah, media everywhere. because they all yeah. all videoed it you yeah know? and um so it's the same it's it's wild and it's turned into this crazy organic thing and it's like skateboarding mm -hmm, so yeah. in skateboarding we did the same thing we. We didn't have phones in my day. In the, in the 90s, we had the, the recorder. Yeah, the, yeah. Hell know, yeah. And we'd, and I we'd, want one of those just to film because that texture, yeah. that, I feel like that would be a cool texture. We had the fisheye lens. Yeah, fisheye. Yeah, fish fish yeah. Filming trucks jumping, that has uh, to be sick. Oh, like old dude. school? Yeah. yeah, old school. So we'd, um, I'd film all day long just to land one trick. So uh -huh. yeah. it's very similar to what we do in Terror. Like you want to just do this huge jump and you you know yeah. you get the you work up to you work it. up yeah. to it right yeah. so in skateboarding it's like hey i want to do a 360 kick flip down a 10 stair you know thing right and you can't do it yet but you spend all day filming your buddies filming you do 1000 tries you know until you finally land it mm -hmm. and you have that one clip that took all day yeah. right yeah. and in back in those days we did the the videos for our you know pro parts so uh -huh. we do one crazy trick a day for like I don't know, like months. And then wow. they take all those crazy tricks and they make an edit and then it would come out and all the kids would be like, do you see that part that Eric did? He, he did this 20 stair handrail backside, you know, grinded it, you know, cause that's how it is in skateboarding uh -huh. to this day, you know, yeah. but they do it on social media now. And so it's the same thing in Terra Crew. It's like a, um, you're constantly, everyone's filming, everyone's pushing each other, but everyone's trying to get that, that one banger shot on video that everyone's gonna go, man, do you see that whoop section that he was going through? That's that slow motion uh -huh. shot. It's just, you know, iconic, you know, and that's what you're trying to do in that type of thing versus racing. You're just trying to uh, do the best you can. Yeah, it's, you know? it's totally different. Like totally. racing is like all the hype, like everyone's yeah. got their competitive face on. Yeah. And, uh, and we learned that to this last weekend with the mint. Uh -huh. So that when we go out to like the scenes that we're normally involved in, you know, everyone knows who you are. You get the crowds, you know, the whole thing, like you were saying. Yeah. But then when I was at racing, 
no one, I, no one knew who I was. You know, they, just a couple people did, but they were like, they don't, they're not so social media ish. They're not filming everything. I feel like it's a totally different world. It's a just, different yeah. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I kind of like that. It's a totally different world. It's more about competitive and trying to, you know, com- compete yeah. and do. People everything. are less worried about what the cars look like and Correct. who the hell is going to be finishing first. Is yeah, what they're, what they they're don't care about. about that as much. And but in the lifestyle, I feel like like going out there and meeting with all the people. Um, you're really connecting with the people that just genuinely love the sport yep, and they mm-hmm. love being around it and they appreciate the work that's on it. It's just a different, you know, it's kind of like, you know, going to a, a car show yeah, where yeah. you're just like, Hey, like that's sim- like simple or complicated. You're like, that's a clean car. Like you could yeah. tell someone really spent the time to polish but isn't it up. The funnest part of a car show meeting that guy yeah. that had that car, yep. start talking to him, yeah. having this great conversation and go, man, I met a lot of cool people at that car show. Mm-hmm. Right. The same thing happens in the lifestyle. I'll go out to a desert run with the Terra Crew guys or just my buddies, and I'll meet all kinds of new people every time. Yeah. I, I love meeting new people. Uh-huh. It's, it's kind of my funnest thing in this whole off-road season. I know the off-road people care. So here's another thing. The car show scene is different. Every scene's different, right? Mm-hmm. The car show scene, everyone just – you're sitting in front of your car. You're talking cars, but – there's not that camaraderie that off-roaders have. Off-roaders have a way tighter camaraderie where if you break down or you break your truck or you do something, they're going to come. Everyone's going to come help you. Absolutely. It's right. absolutely incredible that the egos aren't as high as the car show scene. The e- there's high egos with like, I, I spent $100,000 on my car. I'm so badass, you know, this and thing. Well, and there's egos everywhere, but they're a little in the desert. Everyone knows, hey, I could break. I'm going to need you someday. I can't be a jerk to anybody. Everyone's a little more, you know, um, just helpful and and more kind to each other because we're in this environment where we need each other to help each other. Yeah, right? right. Yeah, so I like that of it. You know, it's the racing's a little different. They're not as com- camaraderie because they, they want to win they want to beat you you know it's a little yeah. more competitive but they're still cool they're all like super- after the race like everybody if they break down they're going to help you oh, or something 100%. like that yeah 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 the, I, I noticed that too it's like um it I still just, has that mentality but like it's different at, when you're in the race it's different yeah in the race it's like all like concentration yeah, it, it yeah, flip flops. yeah is there an event from you know on the lifestyle things that got you connected with terror crew that um you you remember that's that's really kind of like an iconic like event you went to that's like your favorite that you always think about when you think about these lifestyle events. Some of your favorite. Mine is LS Fest. LS really? Fest. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's LS just Fest. it's everything. Just yeah. like drift cars, race cars, right. off road, anything. Right. With an LS. Yeah. yeah. It's just crazy. It's that's just what a, I enjoy. A mecca of just yeah. car nuts. It just but they all do wild stuff. Yeah. A car show, you do not do anything wild. Yeah, you, <laughs> you just, just sit there, talk yeah, with people. Yeah, you just go to a car show and you cruise over there and you and you you kick back. Yeah. In in our lifestyle, we're doing extreme stuff. Like right. In yeah. Skateboarding, you're doing extreme stuff. In 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 like can ams and razors and trucks, we're doing cra- jumps. We're we're driving the crap yeah. out of our vehicles, and then you go to like LS Fest, they're doing drifts, like sideways doing burnout pits just doing donuts and and they, they're doing drag racing all racing each other and then we're the the terror crowd guys are doing all the crazy off-road jump stuff it's just it's it's an action packed yeah you know? it yeah. is and that's what felt us fall in love with off-roading or just cars in general we, from now on we want to do stuff that's extreme um uh, he wants to drift someday yeah i want to oh. just do anything with cars anything like, with cars anything but not just go sit in front of your car and just let people give you compliments all day. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I hate that now. Like, uh, yeah, it's late, like get out there and drive it. Yeah. Thing, like you know? I, like we, show people what it's got. We yeah. went to that, that <laughs> event, that PRP event where it was like a car show uh-huh. for all of us. And I was ready to go after five minutes. Cause yeah. it's just not, I want to drive and go have fun and, and get excited uh-huh. you know? and, and just sitting in front of my car, my truck and people going, Oh, you have such a nice truck. Like, you, so I don't want to get the, the compliment stuff is not me anymore. I don't like that. I, I think you can you can kind of tell like when you go to the events like the Sandsport Super Show or Offer the Expo and you got like Blake driving around yeah. drifting his car like yeah. just doing anything they can. Um, there's just those. crowds like everyone's just like a magnet to it. Yeah. You know that's what people want to see. It's like yeah. you can look at trucks and after a couple hours you're like okay yeah it's so a truck when this I is first cool, got then- I first got with Terra Crew we did the Off Road Expo and I had the Tundra at the time and they go you do you want a demo and I was like really like me, I, I'm, not, I'm not that good of a driver yet. I'm like, no, just go out there and have fun. Yeah. And, oh, my God, it just, you're, you're, you just, 
you think you're so nervous and then all these crowds and then you just start going and you have no plan. You don't know what you're going to do. Uh, and naturally you just start, it just all comes together. Yeah. This really cool run and you donuts and all this stuff. And like, I can't believe I just did that. How did I do that? Like, you know, <laughs> and uh, that's when I got hooked. And then I did um, Hoonigan's Burnyard. And wow. that was just that's incredible. Yeah. Oh I want to go again if they that ever was have insane. one. The, what, what exactly was that? It was, um, so they had a huge burn yard at um, Irwindale Speedway, uh -huh. yeah. and they invited us to be there too. So we all went out there, and same thing. I was in line, and there's, you know, they have the bleachers up. And uh -huh. Like, it seemed like it's 100,000 people, but it's probably only like, you know, 10,000 people. But they're all there. They had the video, they're filming it for Hoonigans, and you go out there, and they had like a jump for us, and they had all the stuff. And I'm just, went out and just ripped this like two minute run donuts around this camp, like all this stuff I didn't know I even knew how to do, right? And um, I leave and I slide out out the exit and I'm like, how did I just do that? And everyone's you know, cheering and everything. It was like, wow, that was, so I want to do it again. Let me go back And that there. was when there was a Tundra, right? Yes, yeah. that's yeah. when it was a Tundra. Wow. Yeah. With the blue wheels. With the blue wheels, yeah. With the blue wheels. So yeah, they're, they're just, it's just all that stuff is exciting, right? Where, like like you said, you can, you can, Build your, building the truck or building the vehicle is, is so fun. It's like yeah. one of the things I love the most. I, I like building cars. Yeah. And but just then on when them. you're done with the vehicle, going out and having just much as much fun as building it out in the desert uh -huh. makes it like a double-edged sword, great build, right? Yeah. Before I used to build old classic cars and car show cars that when we were done, I went to a car show and that was boring and I just immediately would sell the vehicle because it's yeah. like... I don't get to go. I'm not going to have fun with it. I'm just going to show it off. Yeah. And um, so I would finish the build, and that's why I did so many builds back then. Yeah. I would build a. How like, much of this do you think is like influencing the customers that come to you? Do you think it has a, a big influence that people see that you out out there in the dirt and they're bringing it to you because you're involved? No, I I I do think it is, but I think people. It's hard to get people to really relate and come to you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think social media is. Oh, if you got a big following, everyone's calling SoCal, calling Eric to get stuff. I, it's not. I still get ninety percent of my work through word of mouth mm -hmm. and ex customers that I've worked on their cars and things like that. Or my Yelp is like a five star Yelp and things like that. Um, I thought just social doing good work, good and work, spreading the yeah, word. spreading the word is good work. No one's going to go to you just because you have a cool social media and you're doing rad stuff. Yeah, I, they do. I do. We do get, but it's only probably ten percent. Yep, and um, some businesses will spend all their time and effort on that in um, in my style, and it just doesn't help as much as I think it should. But I wish it did. I think it's becoming more and more better. I do, like today on the way up here, I sold a bunch of tires just by doing a post on Instagram. Uh -huh. So it does do yeah. good. Yeah, but I mean, um, for us, we know that you know someone going around and installing our product and going hey that was a good experience they tell 10 people yeah. you know maybe two of those people will call us maybe not yeah, you know yeah. it, that's how you get a customer to buy your stuff is because right. they or or to use your Their service friend because told them too yeah yeah they said but hey it i had is a, good a combination with social media too so they saw you on social media yep their friend installed the kit. Their other friend said it's great. Yep. Then they go to call you. It's just you. like a, a double positive for yeah. them to say, hey, yeah. I, I acknowledge that they're a good company to work with. Let's right. do it. Right. You know? and, and that it just it validates you. You know, that showing what you guys do, showing what we do validates that we are a, a good company and they get to see and visually see it. Um, but it's not just that. It's the whole package. You have to do everything. You have to do good work. You have to make sure you take care of everybody and make sure they're happy with, mm -hmm. with them. And with you guys, LSK is so awesome because you guys can sell your product all over the United States, the world, if you want, right? Yeah. So your social media is very important because everybody, if, if some guy sees me ripping in the desert and wants me to work on his truck and he lives in Kentucky, <laughs> it's not going to happen. I live, My shop's in El Cajon. I only can influence my local market. Mm -hmm. And so I have a little bit of a downfall with that because I, I have a lot of followers all over the United States. It's not just San Diego guys. Maybe only like 10% of my followers are in San Diego. Yeah. So you're lucky in, in that way that you guys can sell a kit to anybody. Do you have any recommendations to you know people that are watching this that you know there's, there's a lot of shops out there that are doing installs, not just in suspension, but just like anything, like something that really worked for you guys that uh, made a big difference in your company. Something, yeah. something about like, is there a you know a system that's in place that just changed the game for you guys and just made it work? Yeah, I think the what finally made it work was 
at first, when you're first starting um, your customers, you kind of have to like give them a better deal, you know, than maybe they go to a high end shop that charges a higher price. Mm-hmm. So your price might be a little bit lower mm-hmm. because you're trying to influence the person. And you're building your name. Yeah, you're building your name, right? So when you're building your name, you have to give a better price. But then on top of it, you have to do a better job than those other people. Yes. Right. And then when that, if that customer is not absolutely 100% happy, you have to now go and fix and make the car even perfect to him for free, mm-hmm. you know, and then that guy will tell his buddies. Right. So it's that combination of never burn anybody that no. first. You know, that, <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you have to spend 10 hours at the shop to make this guy happy for it's free, worth it. it's worth it. You don't want him talking to 10 other people no. and saying he had a bad experience. It is worth it to do it right. And yeah. just as a general rule of thumb, just a person to a person, you don't want, yeah. you really want to do good by people. And, right. And it, it returns a favor in the long run. Yeah. And that same yeah. thing with social media, even the internet and all that. Now everything's on the internet. Uh-huh. So like, I have like all these million reviews on, not million, but thousands of reviews on Yelp and Google reviews and all that. So you never know what people are going to say. So mm-hmm. you always, that, that helped me a lot when I first did that uh, 20 years ago. There wasn't those Yelps and all that, but I knew that that was important and I just kept that through. So to this yeah. day, I still, no matter what, I take care of the customer. That's, that's yeah, awesome. That's how you, you got to say like, I always say like my customer when you're working on their vehicle, they ask you, are you going to do a good job? And I go, I'm not just working. I'm marrying this vehicle. This vehicle is now my family. It's like part of my family. Like no matter what happens, I'm going to take care of this vehicle because you allowed me to work on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what I tell my customers. And I do believe it. Like if you're going to allow me to do something, I'm going to treat you like family. You right. Know? So awesome. That That's that's. So, so kind of jumping around, going back to like the racing scene. Mm-hmm. Um, what wh- what is your guys' future plans for racing? What what do you have? What do you see in the near future and and long term? Are you going to be doing this for years? Is this something you're just trying? Or I I, I think we're going to do it for like long term. Yeah, I think what what hit us the most, racing in general is awesome, right? Yeah. But we're doing it together. You know, this which is makes it even t- better. Double like it hits you harder in your heart that you're experiencing this incredible adrenaline rush with your son you uh-huh. know, that you love. And so you and your son are just high-fiving after you, when we did the King of the Hammers, yeah. high-fiving, we made it like, and it, it gets you choked up because you're, yeah. you're like, I can't believe I just did this with my son. And you have that son-father bond that memories, memories is all we have in life, right? Uh-huh. So these memories that we create together, I'd rather create these amazing memories with my son than anybody else. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, I, I, lately before this, I would do it with, you know, just all these friends I meet and the Teraku guys and stuff. And they're great. They're my friends, but my son's my son. And, and so that's why I think we love it the most is, and our new goal is not just the racing. Um, we want to go out and just spend a weekend in the desert like we did in right. with and just chase each other, chase each other, him yeah. and his truck, me and Vivian. And we're just cruising around and just hitting these little jumps and, and just feeding off each other and just smiling in our vehicles, just having a good time. And, and that's still the same thing, you know, bonding yeah. together. So Very cool. And and what's the next race you see you guys see yourself doing? And we're going to do the Battle of the Battle of Prim. Awesome. That's, yeah. the, that's the next one. And I'm, then, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, be doing that in my Can-Am. So that's, oh, nice. that's the plan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so seems is it like gonna a good one. Both trucks or just the Ranger? Just the Ranger just for the now. Ranger for now. Okay, and yeah. then eventually now yeah, Vivian eventually. is going to be the new race truck on the block, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think so, at least. When do you think yeah. you're going to do your first race in that? Um, I think I'm going to do um, a more race first. Okay. And yeah. just kind of get it get its feet wet. Uh-huh. And then, um, I probably more save Vivian for the bigger, funner races, I think. Yeah. Just because... Your truck's very comfortable. Yeah, it's super, it's comfortable. super comfortable. And we haven't decided what we're going to do with Vivian. So Vivian has... It's kind of weird. So yeah. it's got a LSX 454 all built motor 850 horsepower Jeez. um <laughs> and it has everything trophy truck from its tube chassis its trophy truck um uh, width it's 135 wheelbase um same same track width same engine size same tube chassis same layover same shocks same hubs same rear end i mean it's a trophy truck with a steel cab mm-hmm. yeah. um so i could run in the 1450 which we're doing with his in the 1450 Pro, we could do 6100. We could make it into a 6100 truck if I take the motor out and put a spec motor in it. Right. I can just keep it the way it is and just go 
just have fun in trophy truck. Yeah. I could mm-hmm. just put it in trophy truck and race a couple trophy yeah, trucks. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Whatever cares. happens, so happens. Yeah. I don't I'm not I'm not doing this to win. I just want right. to go have fun. You and know, it's so. street legal, right? And it's street legal. It's street legal yeah. trophy truck. Street That'd legal be great. trophy truck. Yeah. Right. Why gotta, not? Right. You gotta drive off the street yeah. to the start line. Yeah, and just yeah, that'd be a cool video, right? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> and so then drive it back home. Drive it yeah. home, yeah. From the from, from the <laughs> Bring from a trailer just in case. Yeah, just in case. Just in case. Oh jeez. And also uh, Morgan, Morgan did such an amazing job on the truck. It's beautiful, so I, I don't want to beat it up too much. Dude, right, so. it's right, right. It's on a beautiful truck. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah, his truck is like, it just screams race truck. Uh-huh. Yeah. Everything was built to race. It, it's it's already pretty beat up, but it, it, it can hold together. It's like a tank. You know? yeah. yeah. So I don't know how, how Vivian will be racing-wise. We do need to do some more stuff to it to get it more um what else do you have to do obviously besides the motor and so they in you know racing they bump you a lot uh-huh. so yeah. I, i'll need to do like oh i got bumped in king of the hammers yeah right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i um, like way the cage is yeah and they can bump you but i think i need to do another tube on the bottom so they can bump me without damaging right. anything fuel right. cell wise yeah uh, the front bumper i think i need to bring it a little more curve around and out a little bit so i if i bump somebody else uh-huh. you know but other than that, that's about about all we need to do is is get those little couple little prep things done, and it'll be good. And and uh, fiberglass stuff. I think I want to make sure I have extra fiberglass. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, things like that. Um, but yeah, and uh, uh, we did we talk about Ducky Racing is is our racing name. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tell them how you how you got the name. I don't that. know honestly. I just. <laughs> I named myself that on like video games whenever I just played, uh-huh. and I think it just kind of snowballed. Yeah, yeah. And Made that's sense. How it's, yeah. Tell them how you how um, video games has helped you with it, racing. Video games has definitely helped me with racing, like and building and understanding cars and stuff like that. So, I, I think everybody should like test around with video games for like younger audience uh-huh. for stuff like that. But, well, um, one thing that amazes me about him that I don't have in racing is we did the mint and it's four laps. Right. And he co drove the first lap. First lap. And yeah. this kid has a photographic memory <laughs> of every single turn. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was like, he w- when he jumped in, he, he the co driver that he had with him, he knew the track better than him. He was like, oh, up here, this is a cool section. You know, he yeah. knew every. And I'm, I think that's video games, right? So. Yeah, I think just like video games and. Just like what's with me and stuff like that. Didn't you say you learned the courses? Well, memorizing the course is yeah. going to be a, a pretty huge advantage yeah. for you. Yeah. Did, did you guys have a Lawrence or a Garmin yes. or anything? We had, yeah. we had the Lawrence and we had the iPad yeah. on the lead nav. Yeah. So the lead nav is right there, and then the Lawrence was for back. It sounds like you didn't even need it. No, no not really. <laughs> he, he, he did. I needed it. Yeah. I yeah. needed it. But this kid is like, I, um, he has this way he sees stuff. I think he just. Yeah. He's always been that way. Like I would be driving, and he'd be like, "Dad, you got to turn here." I'm like, yeah. "You're four years old. How do you know he's supposed to turn here?" He's <laughs> he visually knows where everything is, and I think it helps him a lot in the racing thing. Yeah, he knows exactly where each turn. He knows where it's going to come up a ninety, uh-huh. and after just one lap. Yes. Did you guys have any moments in the mid four hundred? You're like, "Oh shit, did we just hit that?" Yes. I yeah. Have a <laughs> okay. <of> okay. <laughs> there was this one section. It's these. It's the King Proving Ground. Out okay. There. It's all the King flags, and uh-huh. it's where they test out there. And I was full on it, like 80, 90 miles an hour through the biggest whoops you can imagine. It was just doing so good. And I saw coming up one of the whoops pretty, like, bigger than the rest. I was like, okay. And and Vivian, you could just gas it, and it would just jump off the whoop and stay good. And his truck, it just, boom, and it popped. And I was like, all I saw was the dirt, like, oh, my God. And then I just gassed it and it just kept going holy cow and my co-driver at the time he wasn't it was eric it was, was co-driving yeah. me yeah, eric that helped us get the camera truck he was co-driving with me that that lap and he goes that was fun <laughs> i was like yeah oh, that shit. was not fun we almost died did you have gopro on the on the car we had like that? five yeah, we had, gopros yeah we had a decent amount of gopros yeah did you look at that section at that spot like yeah. when that happened well, uh, well our, our filmer our filmer he, he's doing our son so we do a youtube we're, we're trying to get more into youtube uh-huh. and, yeah. so he um is editing all the youtube all the inner internal stuff yeah. and he filmed us the whole thing so we'll have a cool YouTube edit I was trying to do out. like a flip around the different cameras as yeah, 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 yeah 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 that's crazy and he hit a, over 100 miles an hour yeah 102 on, on the lake bed damn yeah. I just wanted to hit 100. <laughs> yeah. I could have cruised at like 80 because I felt com- comfortable at 80 but I wanted right. to hit 100 and then yeah. I assume it gets a little wild at 100 you know yeah. but uh, I think I got it to like 112 or something like that Jeez. Like, you got it really high yeah it's crazy that's it's pretty awesome the motor's a beast Dude. in that thing Super light, yeah. Good motor. Wheelbase is short, which is yeah. 
different than Vivian, but yeah. I'm getting used to it. I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like shorter wheelbases. Me too. I like, I like the shorter cars around. and stuff like that. I had that, one yeah. moment where I, I drifted a corner and thought I was just going to drift it real, and I got absolutely sideways, like overly sideways and not and and we saved it remember you're like yeah. dad that was a good save like how did you do that yeah I, and i don't know how i did it i was so sideways for so long i think that's just what the truck is good for drifting yes, and stuff like that so slides yeah. it was crazy awesome well that sounds that sounds great guys i, I really appreciate you guys coming on here and, and talking and you know this is really cool to learn a everything I can about you. I'm sure there's so much more yeah. and really excited to see you guys, um, you know, get out there and race and, and hopefully I'll be racing alongside you guys sometime soon. I know, I know, and, dude. uh, yeah, very cool. Well, thank you guys. Um, if you guys would like to see anyone on this podcast, uh, please let us know in the comments below, uh, make sure to subscribe to us and, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Thanks again, guys for coming. Right. Thanks a lot, guys.